Welcome to Maximum Resilience with me, Kelly Bazzani, as we go on this epic journey of how to own your power and the steps to take that lead you towards an incredible life of maximum resilience. This educational, powerful, engaging, and inspiring show will change your perception of addiction while we revolutionize the approach that ensures mental health as we address a worldwide epidemic. Let's shift the paradigm promoting mental and emotional wellness. We do recover. Experience the transformation from addiction to living your best life. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. I'm Dr. Pat, but I get to do this show with the most amazing person. You know, every once in a while, you bump into somebody and you think, well, wait a minute, how, how is it that our life's path could be so similar and yet so different? You know, how is it that we step out into this world and we know one thing, that we are here to do something purposefully and passionately, that's Kelly. Kelly Vazani is joining me here today. This is about not just personal resilience, but this is her show, Maximum Resilience. I wanna introduce all of you to her, whether you know her as this amazing coach, somebody that took a journey that thought, I'm gonna be on this life path, so I'm gonna work, I'm gonna be a critical nurse, I'm gonna do this, and you step out, and what you find is life hands you some opportunities to learn more about yourself, to grow more with yourself, and then to help others do the same. Today, you're gonna to hear about recovery and resilience. You're gonna hear about rising up and falling down. But in the end, what you're gonna hear about in this episode is one thing that's so important, and that's part of Kelly's message, and that's mindset matters. This is about the duality of the addicted mind explained. Now, I wanna put one caveat out there for all of you. If you're thinking the addictive mind only means drugs and alcohol, no. I buried my sister 450 pounds on a hospital floor. Addictive mind right now hits almost every part of our lives where we are unmanageable. Kelly, great to have you. Great. We're ready to kick this off, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Pat. What an honor and a privilege. I'm so happy to be here with you today. And you're absolutely right. Uh, first time I met you, I remember saying, you know, my soul and your soul are very old friends. Um, working with you has just been just such an opportunity already. It's exactly what we're talking about, right? Another learning and growing opportunity. And that's why I'm here. It's just a lifelong journey. And I'm so glad you introduced me the way that you did. Um, because as you said, my, um, the resilience part of this is so important and people looking at me right now, look at me like this, right? I have credentials back here behind me. <laughs> Hair is on point. Everyone's like, what does she have to talk about that has to do with addiction? And that's what I want to start with because eight years ago, which isn't a very long time, I was nope. homeless. I was in jail for my second time. I was unemployable. I had surrendered my nursing license. Um, I was in a rehabilitation center for my third time. Um, my family was gone, as they should have been with healthy boundaries. And so I'm here to talk about this today because the opioid crisis, the pandemic, it has, it has brought this to the surface for me again. And as I was sitting in jail and I was judging my cellmate in there, because she was in there for first degree murder. And I was like, I am only in here for DUIs. How I, why am I? My higher power knocked me to my knees and was like, if you would have hit a child or you would have hit another person, you'd be in here doing the same amount of time as her. So what makes you think you're any better? And at that moment, I said to myself, I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life doing this work. And I have. And there's so much more to say about that. But what I can say about that is I started, I called my sponsor and I said, send me my materials. And I was in that cell for 23 hours a day and out for one. And I started doing this work and I've continued to do this work. And I kept hitting walls, right? I kept hitting walls. I was doing my marriage family therapist license and I couldn't continue to do it because I was on probation and boom and boom. And so we're going to talk about maximum resilience today. And we're going to talk about it in our shows. And we're yeah. going to talk about it. And, you know, I love that we're going to talk about mindset today because it starts with mindset. 
And the first question, you know, I, I ask myself all, all the time is like, what does this have to do with recovery? People ask, like, why, why does my mindset have to do with recovery? What do you say to them? Because I love that question. First Thank of you. all, well, first of all, if you say mindset to people, they think it's like something different than mine. But, you know, I bet you had a load to say to them. Well, so what do you say to them when people say, what do you mean? What does that got to do with anything? What do you say? Well, the first thing I say to them is, have you ever said to yourself, well, that's just the way that I am? This weekend. This morning. <laughs> <laughs> right? This morning. I mean, <laughs> rent is due on my recovery every day, right? I, I have to make that conscious decision every day. I'm getting ready this morning. I'm like, I have the Dr. Pat show today. I have the, you know, and my aunt's like, well, what shirt do you want to wear? This one or this way? And I'm like, just... You know, and she's like, and I'm like, it's just the way I am. You know it. It's just the way that I am. And I caught myself, right? Yeah. Because we tell ourselves that. And that's a fixed mindset. That's just the way I am. It leaves no room for growth. And so I have to catch myself because we come in with these set of beliefs about ourselves and we make it a reality and it keeps us stuck and fixed. It's so important that we start to talk about these kind of things and just have a conversation. Because if we tell ourselves, like, that's just the way I am, well, where do we go from there? Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that I know you talk about, and let's just give people some information. Yeah. There are now statistics. You know, we've gotten to discover the brain. We've gotten to understand that, you know, the whole idea that we only use 80% of our brain is not true, but there is some truth to that. But we've also understand that we are a machine of thoughts. What do some of the studies say? And I know there's something really important that you talk about. You really have this differentiation, and, and, and this is why this is important for people, between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Tell us, where are we going with the mind today? What is the latest information we got about our thoughts? Well, Dr. Pat, we're born, we're born with a uh, negative feedback loop. That's just, you know, from the beginning of time, animals instincts, right? And so when we're born with this, the latest statistics on this is addicts have over like 12,000 thoughts a day. And that with an addict mind can go to 70,000 thoughts a day. And those are negative and fixed. And so some of the most common thoughts we have are, I'm a failure. I'm inadequate. I'm too damaged to be loved. I should have known better. Those are really heavy thoughts that we have. And they occur so rapidly and they occur so that that we don't even challenge the logic on those and we make mm -hmm. them a reality. And it's so important to talk about that because look at the first two words in that I am as if your whole self is flawed. And so we go throughout our day thinking that and think about that. You go into relationships thinking that you go into a job interview thinking that you go into all these things thinking that and you take action on that and then that's the result and you think about that just for someone that's going into their everyday life but for an addict who's struggling and that's really where i want to point the emphasis there for an addict who's struggling to get back on their feet and they're thinking i'm a failure or i'm too damaged to be loved or i have no value that's another big one yeah Ooh, right and you're holding that because there's a difference between you know i made a mistake and i am a mistake that's the difference between a behavior, I made a mistake, and I am one. And so then when you're trying to hold that, and you're making that a reality about who you are, let's go back to today, where we talk about that, right? Where I this morning, I'm like, that's just the way I am, right? Well, you go into your day, and you hold on to that, and you bring that into everything that you do for that day. Well, what kind of hope does that give you that you're going to recover? That's hard. That's a hard thing. So I kind of want to talk about that today because if that's your fixed mindset, instead of going, well, I made a mistake, but what are the other possibilities available to me to go and do something different the next time? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's something that's so important to talk about. We don't understand that our roots have so much power, our, our, our thoughts have so much power in what designation we take in our future. It, it really is. We, you know, I think the only way to figure that out is to go through the processes. And especially if you've been through recovery like you and I have, there's an entire process that you go through. 
and there are multiple processes. And there isn't just one way. There are a number of ways, but there is no way that I know of, maybe you know one, where we don't have to face ourselves, all parts of ourselves. You know, and isn't this where we get to decide what is, what am I holding on to that is so fixed, so static, that it's not going to get me to where we want to go. So let's talk for a minute about what you mean by a growth mindset and a fixed mindset, because those are pivotal to understanding how to go from wherever you are in your addictive behavior, addictive thinking, to being on the path to recovery, right? That's absolutely right. You know, I can say for myself, when I was going through this, um, the fixed mindset for me was the absolutes. I'll never get better. I'll always feel this way. Nobody likes me. You know, those absolute black and white thinking, because as addicts and alcoholics, we go to the extremes. When we do it, we do it, right? We're all, we're all that black and white thinking. And so when we are in those fixed mindsets, it'll never get better. Those unfavorable comparisons. Well, she does it better than me. Look at her success. I'll never be that way and comparing this out so that shame that we're holding puts us in that in that fixed mindset and so for me alcohol and drugs was but a symptom of like what was all underneath there and so what i really want to emphasize is is that this isn't like how i am now isn't how it always was it's messy it's messy growth and transformation is messy so to go from that fixed mindset to that growth mindset you got to get in there and and get a little bit messy with yourself and that vulnerability okay. and go huh well i want to find out how they did it instead of comparing myself to that person i want to go ask that person how did they do that mm -hmm. and then know that i can do that too or not nobody likes me but I am going to look at what are what are the things that I'm doing that maybe I'm going to look at or ask for that feedback. So instead of looking at feedback as nobody likes me and it's criticism, maybe I'm going to ask some questions and then look and go explore a little bit. So we can talk about these things, but we've got to get messy with ourselves because growth and transformation when people are like, I know, I know. No, we don't know because we've never been there before with ourselves. And so I like to talk about this growth mindset with people because when we're going through addiction, it's a very lonely process. We've got to change a lot of things when we're going with ourselves because we go from having this one life from a critical care nurse, that's an identity, to figuring out a whole new process with ourselves that we've never been there before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't it also true that, you know, a fixed mindset really cuts off any expanded energy? I mean, there are so there are some very clear disadvantages of a fixed mindset. Now, there are some people and there are some situations where a fixed mindset has got to be the rule. And, you know, and let me talk about what that is. Yes. You know, I think each of us have our own, let's just call it fixed mindset about something that's not negotiable and you know and there but but those are let's just talk it like my mom used to say those are few and far between but generally speaking fixed mindsets they put us in such a giant pothole because we miss so much so what what have you discovered about like these fixed mindsets and what their disadvantages are well it doesn't leave any room for growth you know i remember when i was in that fixed mindset it your attention goes where your energy flows and so when you're in that fixed mindset and those negative beliefs that you're having it's like an energy meter right so you you know your energy when your energy meter is fixed on like i am this way right you're expending so much energy thinking i'll never change it'll always be this way nobody you know your your energy meter i want you to think of it like a pg e meter it's like zzz, all the way over you're expending so much energy over here whereas if you're like i think i can change or i think i want to do it this way or let me see where i can expend this energy yeah. over here with happiness or joy or you know over this way what i want you to think of it like i if you think of it like i have to change how do you feel when you're made to have to do something I don't like it. It makes me feel resentful. It makes me feel kind of angry. 
Whereas if I'm like, I get to do it or I want to do it, ooh, that's a fresher new energy yeah. for me. That, that makes me feel like I have a power of choice there. I'm not forced. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it's a different kind of energy feel for me, but that's a different kind of when it, that fixed mindset it's, it's just, it doesn't leave you any room. It's, it's like a fix. So I want to talk a little bit about that because the question I always ask myself, does anybody ever get that feeling in the morning? And, and this happens to me a lot where it's like, and then you carry it with you like a suit of armor into everything that you do. And I had this happen to me, like just even a couple of weeks ago, I'm wearing a white shirt and I'm trying to leave the house and I'm in a hurry and I spill coffee on me and I'm, and I, and I get angry. Right. And instead of separating that feeling from who I am, Kelly, as a person, I carry that anger with me. Right. And then I'm like, and so then I'm waiting in line for something at the grocery store and then I'm angry. Right. And then I'm waiting for a client to come onto a zoom and then they're two minutes late and then I'm angry and then I'm trying to cook dinner and I burn something and then I'm angry because the chicken doesn't turn out. So I carry that with me all day and I'm in that fixed sense so why though right instead of being like i'm grateful that i have a car to drive to go there i'm grateful that i can get groceries i'm grateful so and when i was in my addiction i had that same fixed mindset i'm going through a back surgery and i'm like a johnny one note right every time someone calls my back hurts my back hurts my back hurts my back hurts i had nothing else to, to talk about instead of like what can I do to help me with that, right? What are the other possibilities available to me? So then I go into my beliefs. I need another back surgery. Nobody's gonna wanna do this for me, right? And then the behaviors happen. So then I get guarded and then I get untrusting and then I think I'm gonna be in my addiction. And then, and then, so instead of focusing on what I'm doing in the present moment, I'm way out in the future of where I wanna be and back in the past of getting depressed about where I am, instead of focused on what's right in front of me and what I need to be doing. Yeah. So the fixed mindset has so many energy sucks about it that creates a reality that's not really the reality. Yeah. You know what I love about this? Uh, and for those of you just tuning in, I want to make sure you have information about Kelly. We're going to do a lot of shows together. We're going to talk about a lot of things. Go to MyResiliencecoach.com. MyResiliencecoach.com. You're going to find out about uh, Kelly. You're going to find out about what she's up to, what she believes in. Take a look at the testimonials, all of the above. Because we're talking about going beyond a commitment. We're talking about a passion and a purpose to help others. That's really what this show's about and why she's doing it. And you know, one of the things I love about this conversation is when we talk about something like mindset, unlike some other things, right? Uh, we can change it if we want to. We can change it. You know, there's one thing I learned from uh, one of my first mentors. And, and she said, Pat, you know, there's only one thing in you have in life that's free. And I'm thinking, okay, like what? You know, like, right. She says, you have the freedom to choose. That's actually the only thing you have in life that at a conscious mind level, that's all you have. You can choose. You can choose everything you do, everything you think, everything you feel, how long you feel them, what you do about it. And she went on to say that mindset was one of the major focuses for her she didn't call it mindset she but but talk about this because what if everybody today understood that they had incredible power i mean superpower to change a mindset and then what happens when we flip it and we look at a growth mindset and how it gets us from where we are today to be able to do what we desire to do right I think I think you nailed it, right? I mean, that's the whole that's the whole point of what we're talking about, right? If you look at addiction, how powerless do you feel over your addiction and how unmanageable does your life get? I know for me, I was sitting on the lawn of my rehabilitation center with my sponsor and I'm like, "How are you going to fix this for me?" And she's like, "I'm not. But I'm going to sit here with you and we can fix it together." And I felt so powerless over my addiction. And she had said the same thing to me, Dr. Pat, as your sponsor said to you. She's like, 
how are we gonna, what power of choice do you have? Because we are, we're powerless over people, places, and things. And I get that from clients all the time. This person did this to me and, and how do I change this? And how do I, and I said, if you're waiting on something or someone to shift or change, you're gonna be waiting a very long time. So it's up to you to do the shifting or changing. So don't give your power away to people, step into it and let's make some changes because that's where your power lies. Yeah. At any given time, you can change your mind and you have the right to change your mind. Yeah. I give them a personal bill of rights and they're like, I can do all these things. It's like 30 things. I just yeah. give it to them right away. So the, the power of the growth mindset is like, you have your own unique lens that you can see things through and you get to choose whether it's based on assumptions because you don't have all the information. So it can be on assumptions or you can, you can base it on a fact. And that's why my first assignment I always give her the I am's. The word I am is the most powerful word in your vocabulary because what follows that creates your reality. So if you're like, well, I am brave, I am resilient, I am boom, I am boom, I am boom. And then you take action on that and then you can see some results. And at first people are like, well, I don't believe it. I'm like, it's okay, you don't need to at first. I did it. I used to sit in front of that mirror and I would giggle and then I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and then I kind of <laughs> walk away, right? It took me a couple months. Yeah. It did. But look at how long we were telling each other negative things in the mirror yeah. first. And so I, that's a question I kind of want to ask too. Like, when is the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror and said something positive to yourself? Yeah, I think that's for everybody here at the audience it's a to huge really think question. about this. Yeah. It's a huge question. And, you know, I mean, let's kick it up a little bit. You know, what I love is, you know, some of these layers with mindset go deep you know some of them are conscious and subconscious we know that but you have to start with what you're aware of yeah you have to be able to it was really interesting i caught myself this morning um with linda and i realized i had i'm very mindful and respectful of my best friend but yeah. because we are best friend, we see the most ugliest parts of each other yes and she sees it when i'm i'm beyond the stress point Yes. And and I then I I wish I could change it. But here's the difference. You catch it and you say, honestly, I'm sorry. You know, and I just said to her, look, you know, there'll always be stress in life. That's not your problem. My problem is how am I going to show up today? And what I'm noticing is that you have to have a level of awareness because mindset's not going to change unless you're aware. The other thing that I'd love for you to talk to sometimes we don't see ourselves well i mean you and i are sitting here because other people have seen us in a way to be able to make us more aware right yes. i mean i'm direct and it's okay to be direct but it's not okay to be direct and disrespectful yes. and i've had to apologize to more people in this past year because i couldn't catch my my tone before it came out but I did catch it right away or closely thereafter. And you know, the thing that we're talking about, the mindset and the growth mindset will kick in. Yes. It will say, what did you just say? Or what did you just tell yourself you were not gonna do? Yes. Or, I mean, this is a big conversation. It's a huge conversation and I am so glad you just touched on it. So change takes two things, awareness and action. And I think a big thing on this is the consistency, right? Addicts is, well, look at addiction, right? It's the instant gratification, right? We're trying to suppress or numb or cover or whatever. And we're talking about mindset, which is like putting it out there. And I want to talk about what you just talked about. Dr. Pat, let's get raw. Look at me. I look at what I did with you. When we first started doing this, this is completely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I couldn't be more uncomfortable in these last couple months prepping for this. And look at how I had to show up with you a couple of weeks ago. I showed up and it was uncomfortable because I've never done this before. I didn't know what the production stuff was, uh, you know, and so I went into my old behaviors. Yeah. And I love how you talked about addiction isn't just alcohol and drugs. 
it's gambling, it's sex, it's behaviors, it's all these different things that we do. And so when I got scared or I got in fear, what do I do? I reach back in the past and I pick up my old stuff I used to survive, not to yeah. thrive, to survive. And how did I show up with you? I'm like, mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> right. And so then I got to show up with you and go, hey, I want to I want to take accountability. That's not how I want to show up with you. Right? And you know what's so interesting about it is because you and I are on, have taken parallel paths. Yes. So it, it's not like one of us didn't understand what was happening. Absolutely. Because my understanding of it allowed me to be in a different place of acceptance for it, you know, because we have some tools. But I want to say something before we go to break. And when we come back from break, I want to talk about it. I want the public to hear what I'm about to say. There has never been a greater recording of addictive or addictive habits than in the world we live in today. And there's never been a greater gap between what many of us have learned in some of these programs we're referencing that are not available to the general population because one, they don't know about it, but even in the overeating arena, because we haven't learned how to normalize the conversation. Yes. And here's what I want to say, and Kelly's going to talk about this when we come back from break. You're talking about two people that have worked really hard to get here. Yeah. But if you'd have met us on day one, <laughs> when somebody hands us a big fat book and then tells us, in my case, to memorize 12 things called the promises yeah. and to sit down and shut up in a room full of people, I mean, literally that, and you just want to scream, what is the mindset that keeps you there, though? See, this is what we want to talk about. Here's the thing I want to leave you with that Kelly's going to talk about when we come back. And this is what my mentor said to us, Pat. She said, look, this is going to be you. You are not going to change until the pain of staying the same yeah. is 10 times greater, not just one time, than the pain of change. When we come back, we're going to talk with Kelly about where do we go? You could either take the short version, you could take the long version, you could go quickly or you could go slowly, but you must have a way to do it. And what I want to say with all of you, you're starting on day one. When we kind of come back, yeah. we're both going to talk about what we feel is the paradox of this. But what do you have to have in order for you to have what you really want to have? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Kelly. We'll make sure you have lots of information. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. This is my fantastic co-host joining me here today. This is her show. Uh, Kelly Bazzani is joining me here today. But more importantly, it's about resilience. If you want to find out about her, I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. This episode in particular is extremely important because it crosses a lot of lines. You know, it crosses the lines of whether you think you have a drug addiction and alcohol addiction. You are so glued to your television, you can't turn it off. By the way, cell phone addiction is right at the top yes. of the list now. It's like beating everything. So this is about maximum resilience. Today's episode is about mindset matters, the duality of the addictive mind explained. Hello. So you get it? Addictive mind. You don't have to be like, oh, like I'm not addicted to drug, right? No. Drugs and alcohol just put your cell phone away for 24 hours see if you don't uh, have a nervous breakdown from that uh kelly how do we find out about you tell us a little bit about what you're up to yeah so dr pat um i'm doing right now i just um updated my website and so you can find me at www.myresiliencecoach.com and we're expanding right now which is super exciting um during the pandemic um mental health just got a rise with all of this addiction like you just said cell phone um children struggling with anxieties and depressions and addictions and suicide rates because of addiction and so we just hired two new wonderful em employees um my sponsor actually is now working for resilience so she'll be 
um, spearheading a lot with addiction Good. and another wonderful employee, Marcy Sofer will be working and she'll be taking on a lot of grief clients um, and working with addiction as well. And so you can find us there and then I'll be expanding out so that I can reach a larger audience with um, speaking engagements, going into residential treatment homes and schools so I can target the youth yeah. and get to them at a, at a younger age here. So um, yeah. again, you can find us at um, www.myresiliencecoach.com. And so we can start spreading this message at a larger um, audience. And I just want to thank you again for giving me this opportunity to speak about this because it's just needs the attention that it's getting. Like you yeah. said, you've you've um, buried a lot of people from this. I just lost a friend, my oldest friend in AA on Friday from this addiction. And I'm dedicating this show to her, Carrie, sir, this is for you. And um, I've lost a fiance to this addiction. So it's just so important that we talk about this and start with mindset like we're doing yeah. today. Yeah. And I want to flip this up and get back to the question in order to have what I desire. What do you have to what do you have to shift in order to to, to have the have? Right. But the actual, right. let me let me flip this up for a minute. I am working with a young woman that I've sponsored before and I've watched her you know, go in and out. And she got a great treatment this time around. And what I'm realizing is that everybody in the public seems to think that when people go to treatment, they get out and they get tools. No, mm -hmm. the only people that get that is if you can afford 50 grand a month That's and go up right. somewhere to Malibu. So I'm talking about how the rest of us step up and say, I'll, I'll rewrite your resume for you. I will update your resume for you. I will help. See, th this is a simple thing that most people take for granted, right? That's absolutely right. But when somebody has the desire, they have their resume on a flash drive. Hello. That's absolutely right. right? That's you know, absolutely right. I, you know what I'm saying? That's it's absolutely like right. When you got the desire, you you're ready to go. You're you're ready. But you don't have the tools. So tell us about what we do next. How do we access our full potential? And how do we look at what's holding us back and get the results? It starts with beliefs. So if you're looking at the success cycle, and you're absolutely right, right? I went through re three rehabilitation centers. The first two, $17,000 rehabilitation centers, right? The third one, that was my last one, was funded by a mental health. Free. It was free but I stayed clean and sober because it was my choice and my yeah. desire because I wanted to do it based on my beliefs. And so I'm so glad you brought that up. So it starts with the beliefs. If you're looking at a success cycle, Dr. Pat, it, people do it backwards, right? They start with, I want, a, I want a job, I want a car, I want this, I want this, I want this. And it's like, okay, but you can't have any of that if you don't start with, I wanna know how you're thinking. Yeah. What are your beliefs? What, how are you thinking about yourself? What are your desires? And so to obtain that maximum resilience, let's first start there. What is resilience? It's the ability to bounce back because you can, you can have the desire, but life's gonna continue to happen. And I think as in addiction, like I said, with that instant gratification, it's like, okay, I'm clean now. Now I want my life. So, you know, you hear people say, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I have the car or I'll be happy when I make more money. I'll be happy when. And I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's get sober because what are you going to do when, when you're sober, but then somebody passes away or you don't get the job or you have that craving or whatever. So how are you going to sustain that? That's what I want to talk about. How are you going to sustain that resilience? Yeah. Yeah. What are the tools that you need? You know, so let me ask you, you a question about yourself. Yes. Let me ask you a question because yeah. this is one of the great paradoxes that I had to deal with many, many, many years ago, yeah. but it was right up in my face and I made a choice. And the paradox is, with, and I'm just going to say in general within 12 step programs, all of them, I believe have this. Yeah. And it's paradoxical. And I never understood it. Thank God I had the sponsor I had early on that knew me. Um, and it's paradoxical. It's one day at a time, but you could never have a drink or use again. And I never understood it. Which is it, people? Is it one day at a time? Or are you telling me, no, this is, you can't like go like this many times and then decide you're going to go back to drinking and using. And you see, it's always been confusing for me. And I was so grateful up front 
Yeah. That, For my, that the people I work with said, you will never, ever, if you want the life you want, you will never, ever, 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 <laughs> ever, period. Right? Yeah, true. Said, you'll never do it. And then he said, you'll never be able to drink again one day at a time. And that I love that. <laughs> That's that exactly makes, right. Yeah, that makes sense to me because what he did is he prioritized it for me. Yeah, right. Because when you give me that one day at a time, that is my exit strategy. Yes, that's mindset. So talk about now get us down with the mindset thing, because there's a mindset of one day at a time, like, oh, one day, but then tomorrow. No, it's like if you understand the science of addiction, you will know that somebody that is really watching what they eat if they buy three bags of potato chips they are not going to eat five chips it's it's really hard that's so tell right. us about your experience that's life. right i mean there's so many theories about this right i mean there's there so are. Many, <laughs> it's, it cracks me up there's things that come out all the time you know and and i have clients that come to me they're like what if i just did the you know what if i and i just look you know and i'm like okay for you know the, the experience i love the way your your sponsor said that and my sponsor says to me too you know you need to prioritize your life around your sobriety not sobriety around your life and i love the way she said that too because it's right you know i couldn't sit for five minutes without needing to use or you know i couldn't sit, i had to sit on my hands and this and that so it's like how do you how do you do that because when i would think about it when when i would think about like i can't have a drink at my wedding how do i go to my families there we're italian family i mean there's wine flowing you know and so i had to really you know as my sponsor said play the tape all the way through when i would make plans to do something so i love that it was a one day at a time waking up and making that conscious choice being mindful and always having a plan you know, so if I knew I was going to my parents' house, if I knew there was going to be alcohol, what was I do? I would go. I would always have a plan. If I was going, then go to a, I would have a meeting scheduled. I would have my sponsor on auto dial. I would have whatever, you know, I couldn't just be frivolous because this was my life. And you have to kind of we're taught a certain belief system when we're growing up, you know, loving ourselves is selfish or whatever. When you are start recovery, you got to be selfish because it's your life. So you've got to, your mindset needs to be a certain way. And the goal, Dr. Pat, isn't to rid yourself of all these beliefs and be like, I'm never going to think these thoughts again, that I feel like a failure. The goal is not to allow them into your conscious memory. Like you said, be mindful when they come in and be like, challenge that reality. Be like, what would a woman that's a hundred percent of failure look like? Am I that woman? No, I woke up this morning, I brushed my teeth. Sometimes the list is really small when you're first starting, like you said, on day one. No, I got out of bed this morning, I brushed my teeth, I fed my animal, I got in the shower, I wanted, I want to make it to a meeting. I didn't fail today. Challenge yeah. that reality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, here's where here's where we are. The reason that we want to challenge that we want to challenge that reality and change our mindset is, you know, there's not enough time in this show to really talk about what happens when the magic happens. And when I looked at the first three years and the amazing things in my life that showed up that would have never shown up, just impossible to show up and showed up because I was able to be present in a way that I was never present before. Yes. You know, and, and to see things manifest that on paper realistically shouldn't. And yet there's something that has to happen. And this show is about mindset. It's not about emotion. We'll do another show about that. Yep. So we're not leaving emotions out of the conversation. That's right. But it's so much easier to kick the ball if the ball is mindset. Yes. Right. And that's really what we're talking about today is, you know, we're saying, look, there's a there's a conscious and an unconscious truth. That's right. But if we could start at this one place, what might we change? Right. Yes. And I'm so glad you said that. I mean, I was sitting with my father yesterday at Father's Day, like you said, and 
I was looking at him and he said something. I forget what he said because they just celebrated 50 years. And I'm just looking at them and taking it <laughs> all in. And he looked over and he goes, something. He goes, wow. And I go, well, you haven't said much. And he goes, well, you haven't stopped talking. And I said, well, would you rather me be on Valium and falling asleep? And he goes, if you were, we wouldn't be here. And it just, like you said, you know, the gifts that have come into my life, I always think about this when we talk about mindset, because it's not easy. So I don't want to talk about this like it's not work. You know it's not. You've been through this too. It's work. It's it's working your way, the resilience. That's what the definition is, right? Is bouncing back from things like that. Because when I first got clean and sober, I was holding on. I wasn't showing up in my addiction for people. I did things in my addiction that I would never do clean, but I'm human, like you talked about. I still do things clean and sober that I'm not proud of, like you said with Linda, right? That she knows you on a level, right? That's like me and my aunt. She gets to see me behind the scenes, not like this when I show up, but two days before. So I just want to, I really want to get the message out that I, I, I tell my clients, right? This is imperfect progress towards what we're trying to accomplish here. It's not to be done perfectly, but like you said, when the pain gets greater enough and you're ready to change this. It's it's the gifts and the abundance that you receive on the other side of it. If you just keep doing it one day, you can't lift a thousand pounds in a day, but you can lift one pound a thousand times. So these small repeated efforts will get you there. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, somebody asked me the other day or last week it was, you know, are you worried about COVID? Right. Because it just every time you turn around, I got a text message from the place I play ping pong. You know, COVID, COVID, COVID. There are more COVID cases now than even were reported, but we're not yes. reporting. It. But, you know, it's there. It's just yes. everywhere, right? Uh, Fauci got COVID. Yeah. Dr. Fauci. I saw that COVID. on Google. I, I like, sent it to my friend. I was friend. like, yes. okay, wow. dude. Right. Yes. I'm like, if Fauci got COVID. <laughs> but, you know, somebody asked me this question and, I, and they said, you know, you've had a couple of people out with COVID. I said, that's right. Like three out of four. Yeah. And I said, so they said, are you worrying about it? I said, well, first of all, no. Second of all, I'm prepared. And they looked at me and they said, what do you mean you're prepared? See, this is the key to recovery. They said, what do you mean you're prepared? I said, well, I already work with a couple of doctors, a naturopath. I work with the nutritionist. I have more supplements sitting on my table of what I should take, when I should take them, how to build my immune system. I'm here sucking on vitamin C water. And, and then I said, this is a matter of mindset. I said, I got sick a couple of weeks ago and it was not COVID, but it had to be COVID's ugly twin. Yes. And it's that other thing that was floating around. And I said, you know, we've taken a word in our in, in in our country in the world we've taken one word and it's covid and we've given it so much power and i do not want to understate or undermine the people and people in my family that have died from it so let absolutely. me just be clear about that absolutely and i'm also not undermining the fact that any one of us can die from it but what am i going to hold in my consciousness and my mindset you know what's going to happen if i have addicted behavior and i get covid and i say okay that's horrible time to really numb myself see we have to be ready and i don't care what version of recovery you're in gambling cell phones hello cell phones sex addicts i don't care who you are if you are not prepared and ready for life this journey is gonna kick your butt upside down and sideways well that's exactly what i'm talking about with the gosh you're are you living in my home i think you have a mic in my bedroom i had that too and we when we're talking about that success cycle like you're asking me about the potential the emotional intelligence will give you the potential doesn't mean you're going to do anything with it you're talking about the emotional fitness that puts you in that state of readiness so if you have those beliefs right and then you you put it into that action 
And then that's what you're talking about. So if you have the emotional intelligence, right? Okay, great. You're managing your circumstances, but that's really chaotic. Like we were in our addiction, but that emotional fitness that you're talking about puts you in that state of readiness. So you're like, okay, now I have my vitamin C water. I have this, I have this playing the tape all the way through. Boom. Right. That's that resilience. Boom. Putting yourself there. That's what I'm talking about when we when we talk about those side of things. So then if something were to happen, you're not sitting there scurrying about fear. So we get something like COVID. We get something like addiction. We get something that's like I'm being asked to change. I'm being asked to do something different. I'm being asked to put out out of my comfort zone. Fear. Two definitions for me. I'm not going to swear, but mm, everything and run. Yeah, exactly. Or face everything and rise. Yeah. We have a choice. Yeah, we do. So we can and give our power away or we can step into it and go, what's on the other side of this? Mm -hmm. But when addiction becomes our identity and we wear it like this, what happens when we take it off? Who are we? Yeah. I mean, isn't this the cornerstone of maximum resilience? I mean, this yes. is what you do. See, these are cornerstones. You yes. can, my friend Jean Houston calls them tipping points. You can call them whatever they want. But the bottom line is resilience, not enough. You need to develop maximum resilience in today's world. Yes. You know, um, about, I'd say 10 years ago, I found a woman. Her name is Melanie Tanya Evans. She is now known as a narcissist abuse expert. She had no degree. Wow. She got she came out there and I was doing some research for a friend of mine. And she came and I ended up using her stuff on my friend, you know, to, to really say, oh, my friends really like that. And one of the things she comes out and said it was really hard until I put it into the recovery blueprint. Yes. She said no contact. And then she explains why. You see, addiction is narcissistic in nature yes it has all of the characteristics yes. and the seduction yes. of a person that has narcissistic personality disorder yes addiction somebody said to me i thought it was seductive no it's narcissistic yeah. addiction has one thing in mind to use you yes. to suck you up gaslight you, you right it's not realistic it gives you an altered sense of reality doesn't it's not empathetic i mean it's just it has all of the characteristics of it and you're absolutely god that's a good that is a great depiction of what addiction is because when i was in my last rehab they had you write a goodbye letter to your drug of choice and i was like you were my best friend and i'm like no you weren't <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't right. Uh, what a false sense of reality that oh was. Oh my god! You know, but let's talk about this though from your perspective because yes. you know this is the body of work you do every day. Yeah, this is what you said earlier about expanding your website. Yes. Not because you have nothing better to do, because no. you see the need. Yes, to get help for people. Yes. What do you see as we look ahead? What do you see as you look out in the world and the people you're working with, what is their greatest challenge right now? I mean, you know, one of the things I've looked at and I work with a lot of people and I got a call from a woman that I sponsored in NA and she reminded me of something that goes so far back. She said, she said, Patty, do you remember the time I told you my user was showing up on my door like every day? And I could never understand this, right? like i know what i would do if i had my uh, my uh, my my uh if i had my supplier show up, show up on my door this was her supplier right show up on my door every day i know what i would do and i could never understand why this guy kept coming to her front door every day and i said well what do you do when he comes you know i just tell him to go away and it takes me 10 so you're i said the next time i want you to have your phone and I want you to dial the police. And if you have to open your, don't open your door, but if you have to do it, hold up your phone and start talking to police and say, hey, Joe, blah, 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 is standing out here in front of my door and he's trying to sell me drugs. And she said, do you remember telling me that? And I'm like, 
oh my god did i tell her that because that that was i don't know what part of me would tell her to do that <laughs> right because now i know the danger in it yes but i was new yep and she said do you remember that you know telling me to do that i said yeah he said do you know what she said do you know what happened with that i said no she said i got blacklisted by every dealer in a 25 mile radius and then i i said oh that's good that's perfect well <laughs> that's take a it. good thing yeah she said yeah you gave me such an interesting reputation that none of them called me yeah immediately every single one of them look we have to make this stuff up as we go to help people. we do what are the challenges you're facing tell me what you're seeing out there and what did you have to change and adjust to help people better well my services you know started um i i my youngest client is eight years old my oldest client is 71 and that's the need what i noticed during the pandemic is mental health didn't get any attention and i was mortified with that i kept waiting and i kept saying mental health is going to be our next pandemic and it is and i just noticed it and it's linked with addiction and i kept waiting to see that and so on my website my mission and purpose you know is to end uh, the stigma around addiction and and mental health and to promote emotional wellness and my my mission you know is to heal myself because if i'm not healing myself on a daily basis how am i going to then help other people to heal myself and my clients in a way that's aligned with uh, mindful service embodied with that so what i'm seeing is um, more adolescents teenagers and things coming like you said with um parents with the cell phones uh internet um addiction um things like that this sh uh, school shootings and trauma from that with teachers um and the teachers i have a lot of teachers now i have a lot wow. of critical care nurses that are having ptsd and trauma from uh, covid oh yeah uh, and so they're getting more into addiction and self-medicating um, a lot of couples uh, with addiction issues um, and just needing more help in schools to help educate and and support teachers to just all of it, Dr. Pat, all of it. It's just so so what I want to do is just be able to go in and take people back in my story and how I got into acceptance was a big yeah. one. Yeah. and not denial of what and and taking accountability for every yeah. choice i made that led me to where i was and then how i sustain it with healthy boundaries yeah. and this and that listen i was yeah. the black sheep in my family when i was in my addiction and now i'm the black sheep sometimes in my family uh in my sobriety for setting healthy <laughs> boundaries and doing the things that i'm doing right oh my god uh, we should do a whole show on that because i'm getting ready to have a conversation with somebody because I've noticed a consistent edge and it is so uncharacteristic. And why do we notice it? Because we notice it in ourselves first. You see, you yes. can't see something in somebody else. You can't, you got, no. look, if you see something in somebody else, you're looking in the mirror. Mirror, point one finger, there's two pointing back, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh and so God. there's just so much to be educating. And so I'm doing a lot of coaching around you know, self care yeah. and loving yourself is not selfish and how to take the first steps because it's much easier to point the blame outward than be like, let's take yeah. a look at how do you contribute to the problem by either your reaction or your inaction when the problem is occurring. And, you know, I said, you can get mad, you can do whatever I can, I don't personalize, but like, let's take a look at that because that's yeah. where your power lies with that so that you can you know, factually respond to your life instead of emotionally react with, with whatever we're dealing with. And so um, and look, that's what we're doing. I got to tell you, this is one of many shows we're going to do together. We're just love getting it. warmed up here, right? I love it. So right? excited. And you have a whole series we're going to be creating because yep. there's one thing that Kelly and I know. We know that given our history, we have to help others. We have to this is not something we can brush away mm -hmm. it's on our minds it's in our community kelly thank you so much last question what is your personal message what would you like to leave everybody with today we do recover we do 
and it is possible. And any way that Dr. Pat and I can support you, especially how I can support you, I'm here and our team is here. We're gonna be spreading this message. It is my life's work and i am it's an honor and privilege to do it. And I'm so passionate about it. And to have this opportunity is just mind blowing. So I'm so excited. That's the message I wanna leave. I love it. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much. It's yes. going to be so great. I want yes. to thank Daniel for doing what he does so best, but thank I want you, to Daniel. talk to all of you for a second. I get asked all the time, why after 20 years do I keep doing this and does it ever get tiring? And the answer is Kelly. Kelly Bazzani's wife and the people like Kelly because we have made a commitment and dedication to help all of you. Please let us know if you want us to take on a particular recovery topic yes. and send it to us. And Daniel has this right up on the screen. We'll let you know, we'll get it covered. We're here for you. Kelly, thank you. Daniel, thank you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Maximum Resilience. Views expressed on this program are those of the host.